Okay, today we're going to be talking about how to use Ka to calculate pH. Now, um, and we'll just jump right into an example here. It's probably the best way to deal with it. And so, let's say we have a Ka of acetic acid as 1.5 or 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. What is the pH of a 0 0.30 um, uh, molar solution? Now, typically, um, we would be given the pH, which would give us our equilibrium hydrogen ion concentration after we converted it. In this case, we're not. So. I'm going to write down a few things that we do know. So the first thing that we do know is we, we know the formula of acetic acid. It's the acetate ion, C2H3O2, with a hydrogen on front. So there's acetic acid. And we can write the uh, decomposition or the dissociation equation um, as our hydrogen ion plus C2H3O2, our acetate ion as well. Um, some other things that we know, we can create an ice table. And we do know in this ice table that we have an initial concentration of 0 0.30 molar, and we don't have any of this or this. First thing that we know. We also know that we could write the Ka expression for this. Ka is going to be equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, which is going to be equal to the hydrogen ion concentration multiplied by the acetate ion concentration all over acetic acid. Okay, so that's all we're given and as I said before um, typically they'll give us the pH which we could convert pH to hydrogen ion concentration and fill in our equilibrium line for the hydrogen ion and use that to fill up the rest of our ice table but we don't have that this time so um, we're gonna have to look at a different way to solve this. We do know that we're starting um, with 0.3 and so we know that this reaction is gonna proceed to the left and so we're going to be losing um, x here, and we're going to be gaining x here, and we're going to be gaining x here. And so let's go ahead and fill in our equilibrium line as plus x here, plus x here, and 0 0.30 minus x here. Okay, and that's the best we can do with this problem. Um, but let's go ahead and plug some things into the Ka expression and see how we can um, how we can work this. So Ka is going to be equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. For our numerator, we're going to plug in x multiplied by x, which we're just going to call x squared. Again, that came from x multiplied by x. And then we're going to put that over um, 0 0.30 minus x, just like that. Now, in order to solve this, this problem um, algebraically for x, uh, we have to use the quadratic formula or um, an equation solving calculator, but there's an assumption that we can make. And the assumption that we're going to make is this. We're going to assume that the percentage of ionization is so small that x here will really not matter, that there is really not much um, subtracted off of the original point 0.3 and so if that's the case, we can say that 0 0.30 minus x is basically equal to 0 0.30, and that's going to make life a lot easier for us to solve. And so, um, and we can run it through the quadratic um, equation and find that we're going to get something very, very close. So if that's the case, what we're going to do is rewrite our Ka expression as 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth is equal to x squared over 0.30. Now this problem becomes uh, much easier to solve with that assumption, and so let's go ahead and solve this. So we're going to get 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth multiplied by 0 0.3, 0 equals x squared. We're going to get x squared is equal to 5.4 times 10 to the negative sixth. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and square root both sides so that we get rid of the x squared. Square rooting both sides is going to give us a value of x is equal to um, 2.3 times 10 to the negative third. Um, now what we're going to do is take this value for x um, once we found x and we're going to plug it back into the equilibrium line. So we have 2.3 times 10 to the negative third. I'm going to scroll back up here, and here we have x. 2.3 times 10 to the negative third 
2.3 times 10 to the negative third. And I could plug back in here 2.3 times 10 to the negative third as well and subtract there. Um, I'm not going to though. Really all I was after is I'm after this x value because this x value gives me the hydrogen ion concentration. So I'm going to scroll back down here. So if this is equal to our hydrogen ion concentration, it becomes really easy to solve for pH because pH is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, which is equal to the negative log of 2.3 times 10 to the negative third. And so our pH for this solution is going to be 2.64. Okay, now this rule only applies um, in one case. This rule, and when I say rule, we're talking about the assumption that we can make that the x um, that we're subtracting off from our um, initial concentration of acid um, is so small that we don't have to worry about it, only applies when we have a percent ionization equal to less than 5%. So what we could do is we can go back and double check to make sure our present ionization is less than 5% on this problem. So remember, our present ionization was equal to our hydrogen ion concentration at equilibrium over our acid concentration initially multiplied by 100. So in this case, our hydrogen ion concentration at equilibrium in this problem was 2.3 times 10 to the negative third. Our acid concentration initially was 0 0.30, and when we multiply that by 100, what we're going to get is we're going to get 0.77%. Now, that 0.77% is less than 5%, and so we can go ahead and use the assumption that we don't have to use the quadratic formula. We can just assume that x is so small that it isn't an issue to deal with. If it was greater than 5%, we would have to go ahead and use it, the solving equation function on our graphing calculator or the quadratic formula, which has never been accessed on the, on the AP test in recent years. And that's um, all we're going to be doing tonight.